Hey guys, so welcome to today's video and welcome on into my beauty stash. Today is going to be a collab video with the gorgeous Alicia from Alicia Budget Beauty and my new friend Heather from Crazy Beautiful Makeup. This is going to be a video dedicated to those of you in your 40s. I am 41. I turned 41 back in March. Heather is 41 and Alicia, she is the baby of the bunch. She just turned 41 like a few days ago. She just turned 40, I'm sorry. She just turned 40 a few days ago and she had this idea for a video, things that we do differently in our beauty routine, our makeup routine, maybe just our overall life routine now that we've hit the big 4-0. And let me just be the first to say 40 ain't old at all. I feel physically the same way I do as when I was 18. Sometimes I feel like I'm even stronger now than I was then. So it's totally just a number and I'm gonna share something with you that I usually, I, I don't think I tell many people this, but I never step on a scale. I never get on the scale. I haven't been on a scale. Well, I've been on a scale obviously when I go to the doctor, but I haven't known my actual weight in about three years. And I don't want to know my weight. That's one of my things now that I'm in my 40s that I don't want to know. I want to go by how I physically feel and how my clothes fit because how my clothes fit is going to determine whether that number, whatever it is, it needs to go up or down. So that's just, you know, something, things that we're going to talk about in this video. And I'm going to have both ladies channels linked in the description box. That way you can go over there, check them out, Send them some love and tell them that Steph sent you over. If it is your first time here on my channel, I want to say hello and welcome to all of you. My name is Steph and I love talking about makeup. I love talking about beauty, skincare, all of that good stuff, applying makeup, you guys. Should have seen this look go up already as a YouTube short. It is using a palette that I'm going to be featuring in today's video, um, but definitely be on the lookout for that. I'll have what I used linked in the description box as well. Some of those things might be affiliate links, so if you do end up shopping through them, thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. But um, I want to invite you guys, if it's your first time here, I want to invite you guys to become part of our makeup family. Do me a favor, click on that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it. That way you can be notified every time I do drop a new video. And if you're a fan of these like collab videos, tag style of videos. Maybe you are new to your 40s as all three ladies, as all of us are, then definitely give this video a thumbs up before you go. Let's get started guys. These are going to be in no particular order. There are just 10 things that I have learned, that I have changed, that I have come to realize in my 40s. If you want to hear all about them, keep on watching. Okay, so the first couple things that I'm going to share with you have to do with skincare. Skincare in your 40s is very different from the skincare you were doing in your 20s, even a little bit different than what you do in your 30s. And I want to talk about first and foremost, retinol. Now, I think that retinol is something that you should be using already in your 30s, but maybe you are new to it. Maybe you're new to like skincare products in general. This has been my go-to retinol for a number of years, and it is from one of my favorite trusted skincare brands, Paula's Choice. This is their 1% retinol treatment with peptides and vitamin C. It says it's good for all skin types. Now, Sometimes retinol can cause a little bit of an irritation. So if 1% sounds like it's going to be a little too much, I do believe they have one that is a 0.5%. So that way you can kind of work your way up. I have found no discomfort, no irritation with this. Retinol is going to be one of those must-have ingredients to help combat the signs of anti-aging. Now, is it going to take away your wrinkles? No. Can it reduce the appearance of them over time? Sure. We can't slow down the aging process. We can't help that we get lines and our skin and our texture and, you know, just the overall shape of our face. We can't help that changing. It's just part of aging. We need to embrace it. But we can take good care of our skin and implementing serums like this. Retinol I use like every two days. You don't need to use it on a daily basis. But a retinol is definitely going to help exfoliate 
your skin, but it's also going to help with um, that anti-aging effect. So if you have not gotten into retinol and you're already in your 40s, please add that to your must try list before 2023 is over. They also have retinol derivatives or other forms of retinol that can kind of do the same thing. I don't really recommend those. I think there's nothing better than the original. And then there's also medical grade retinol that's really gonna be under the care of your physician and whether or not your skin can tolerate that. For me, this has worked great and I love the way my complexion looks. So next, I would say that something I had done all through my 20s but stopped doing like the first half of my 30s was wearing an eye cream. I thought I could just take my moisturizer up under there and I would be fine. But you know what? It's not. I wasn't fine. I noticed that my under eye area was starting to get more fine lines and it was starting to get them sooner rather than later. And I thought, you know what? I just need to get an eye cream. I need to start somewhere, even if it's at the drugstore. I have this one right here from Glow Recipe. This is a retinol based eye cream. Again, I don't use this one every day. I use it like every two days whenever I use the Paula's Choice Retinol Serum is when I'll use this. This is a pretty thick consistency, but the um, skin under your eyes is very different than the skin that's like on the side of, of your cheek that's on your your forehead. This is the most delicate area, the under eye area on your face. So you need to treat it um, as kindly and gently as possible. Um, I like using eye cream both day and night. I never skip it. It is always in my routine and I really think that has helped to keep my under eye area looking as smooth. Do I have some full out there? looking as smooth and blurred as possible okay I don't think that the moisturizer unless you're in a bind right unless maybe you forgot your eye cream but typically the moisturizer that is intended for your face is not necessarily meant to be taken up taken up under the eye area sometimes it might cause irritation it might be a little too harsh like I said this skin is tougher than this skin right here. We need to be more gentle in how we treat our under eye area and an eye cream is definitely a must. And when you wear your eye cream, you're gonna wanna pat it in with your ring finger and you wanna take it up all through this area, like all in here, even go above the brow, like right in here. Do your eye cream all in this area because this is all eye area and that's very tender skin and we need to protect it and so now that I'm in my 40s it's definitely a do not skip step in my skincare routine and I'll have a couple you know I'll do like an affordable option and then what I use if it's not affordable um, I'll have you know some options for you as far as all of these products that I'm talking about um, in the description box that way hopefully it'll help you make some good buying decisions now the number three thing, third on my list, is in your 40s. You should have been doing this back in your teens and when you were growing up. But I realize, you know, we don't always have the same mindset. We definitely don't have the same mindset in our teens that we do in our 40s. But, you know, maybe you just weren't aware. Maybe you weren't educated. Maybe you just, you know, never stopped to think about it. But sunscreen. I know whenever you go to the beach, whenever you go to the pool, when you were little, your mom would be, you know, putting sunscreen all over you, making sure you reapply. The same goes for our face. If you start using your sunscreen when you're young, in your teens, in your 20s, wearing a hat, reapplying, protecting your facial skin as much as you can, shielding it from the sun, that is going to pay off dividends when you get into your 40s, 50s, and beyond. The two sunscreens that I've been really enjoying, this one from La Roche-Posay, this is the Anthelios Light Fluid Sunscreen. It's in the shade Ultra Light. It is a tinted sunscreen, but although it goes on white, it kind of just adapts to your skin tone. 
This has SPF 60 in it. And then I have this Universal Tinted Moisturizer from Dermatology. This one has SPF 46 and it really leaves the skin with a nice tint and especially a nice glow. I find that both of these can act as makeup primers and they lay so well under makeup. I wear this one by itself a lot on my no makeup makeup days, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. But um, this one from Dermatology has been a favorite of mine for quite some time. This one from La Roche-Posay I discovered about a month ago. I've been loving it. They did send me this one in PR. I just, actually they sent me both of these. Both of these I got in PR, but they have been really good uh, sunscreens for me. And that is one thing I never fail to do. Even on a day like today where I don't plan to leave the house, I don't even think I need to step outside of my house, but to check the mail, I'm still wearing my sunscreen because when you sit next to a window or there's light coming in, that can still that can still get to your skin and keeping your skin away from the sun is going to be one of the best things that I could recommend to all of you in your 40s and 30s and 20s and 50s and 60s and so on and so forth I cannot stress the importance of a good sunscreen that will help to keep the wrinkles away now that I'm in my 40s my face has changed a little bit. You know, there's lines there where there weren't before. So the way I apply my makeup has to change a little bit. What I have noticed is implementing a little triangular powder puff into my makeup routine when I set my under eye area, when I set my T-zone. This has made a world of difference as to how my under eye area looks. I feel like I get a more blurred, even application. I don't use as much powder as I used to when I was using a damp beauty sponge. And also the dampness mixed with the powder, mixed with the foundation, that can all cause cakiness. When you use something that's dry, and this is like one of those velour powder puffs, I got these from like, um, Shop Miss A and from Timu and stuff. You can get a pack of 10 for like $2. Um, these allow a softer application for powder, especially under the eye area, which again, we want to treat it a little more gently now that we're in our 40s. But it also allows the powder to set and lay better. It helps it to kind of warm up to the skin and just absorb and mesh with what's underneath it, the concealer or foundation, whatever it might be. This has been a game changer that I have been using since I turned 40. Um, I definitely love the application that I get from a velour little triangular powder puff than I do from a damp beauty sponge. Some of you might also like the application of a, um, a, a brush with your under eye setting powder. And if that works for you, great. This, however, has been working out so well for me. And I'm so happy that I have this little velour powder puff in my stash. So another thing I want to talk about, when we turn 40, 40 is the new 30. You know, just like 50 is the new 40, so on and so forth. It's just a number. It doesn't represent who you are, what you are, how you need to be. It doesn't represent anything but your age. And you don't have to act 40. I don't think there is a prescribed way of acting at any one age unless, you know, you're like an adolescent and a teenager and stuff. But I mean, you know, you are a free thinker. You can wear and do and say just about whatever you want providing you're willing to deal with the consequences that might come from some of that. But my main point that I'm getting to is coming from a makeup perspective. A lot of people feel that once they reach a certain age, oh no, I, I can't wear those colorful shadows. I can't wear that colorful eyeliner. No, I need to just keep it neutral. 
Oh no, you definitely don't. Colorful makeup knows no age. Colorful makeup is not just for teenagers. It is not just for people in their 20s. It is for people of all ages. And the palette that I am wearing today is this one right here from Unearthly Cosmetics. It is their Get Groovy palette. I bought this as part of the large mystery box for summer 2023 which by the way is restocking this week. If it's not restocked the day you're watching this video, it's coming really soon. And I have a new affiliate code with Unearthly. It is Steph that will give you 10% off of your order over there. But this is a look, it's already gone live. It should go live. Probably these videos go up in the same day or the short on this makeup look went up uh, before you're watching this one. But definitely I have a tutorial over this look. This is such a fun, pretty palette to work with please don't think that because you're in your 40s you can't wear blue eyeshadow or you can't wear orange eyeshadow or pink eyeshadow i mean unless you know that there are certain colors that just don't mesh with your skin tone i totally understand that but don't feel that because you're of a certain age you can't wear certain things you can't wear a green lipstick or a purple lipstick i mean it's makeup. It's meant to be inspiring. It's meant to have fun with, and it's meant to just make you feel good. And for me, I always feel good in like a colorful makeup look, but I also feel more glam and elegant in neutral makeup looks. So I like changing things up. I like, you know, just being able to look different every single day and that is the beauty of, of makeup it allows us to change up our look from one day to the next please take it from me take it from Steph Dr. Steph over here I'm a doctor of education please wear your colorful makeup no matter what age you are doctor's orders so the next thing I want to talk about in continuing with doing what you want wearing what you want you also don't have to wear makeup. Nobody says you need to wear makeup to work. Nobody says that you need to wear makeup to go to school. Nobody even says you need to wear makeup to go on a date. If you don't want to wear makeup, then don't wear it. Don't wear it. This is your face. You are beautiful with and without the makeup but wear your sunscreen if you're going out during the day. Um, makeup is supposed to feel inspiring. You know, you're supposed to be inspired. You're supposed to want to apply it. And if you just don't feel like applying it that day, then don't wear it. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be less attractive. It doesn't mean that somebody is gonna like you less. It is just makeup. And people can obviously see that. What's underneath, it's what's more important than this mask, right? That we put on to go out in public, to look good for people we don't even know. I mean, the opinions of others shouldn't really matter. They don't pay our bills. They aren't the ones, you know, keeping us company. People that you don't even know, don't try to impress them. You don't even need to try to impress anybody but yourself. Okay, you yourself are what matters. And when we get in this mindset of, oh, you know, I can't do that. Like I need to wear makeup. I need, I need to wear makeup for this, for that. I mean, you know, no, please take the chance. Try going maybe to the dollar store without wearing makeup. Try going to the grocery store, Try going to the mall. Try going out for, you know, lunch, dinner and drinks in the evening. Just try it and see how maybe liberating it feels for those of you that have felt like you've been forced to wear makeup every time you go out in public, let's get away from that, okay? You don't need to wear makeup every single day. It's okay to run errands without makeup. You're still beautiful, you're still unique, and you're still you. And people, if they don't like that, then they don't have to look. So another thing that I've been doing in my 40s, and this started last year, I've been downsizing. I've been downsizing my life altogether. And at this time last year, I didn't know that that was going to be my final year of teaching, of being an educator. I was an educator for 18 years, both um, at the secondary level and also, you know, at the college level. Um, this is the first time that I don't have a full time job other than YouTube. My entire life, I've always worked, 
and gone to school. I've been doing that since I was 16 years old. I've had a job since I was 16 years old and I'm 41 right now. Um, I've been doing both things, either having two jobs, which was this YouTube channel, full-time job, and then you know my teaching job, which was also a full-time job. I did that for four years. Before that, I was going to school full-time, getting you know my master's, uh, my doctoral degree while still teaching full-time. I mean, I've always had two things going at once. This is the first time in my life that I'm just like, oh, like I feel like I can breathe. Like I feel like I'm just taking a moment. I don't know how long it's gonna last. Um, I think eventually I will get another job, even if it's just a part-time job, but I'm really just soaking in the fact that I just have one thing to focus on. And so that comes from downsizing. And in my life, like in my spending, I've learned that the clothes that I wear, I used to always buy, like especially in my 20s, I used to always buy like, you know, name brand everything like i wouldn't dare buy anything like at walmart or target or anything like that um now it's like those are the only places i buy my clothes i buy my tops at walmart at costco five below i don't spend a lot of money on clothes um and i just i just don't like i'll spend money on shoes here and there but not i'm not buying designer shoes when i say i'll spend money on shoes like I'm okay dropping $150 on running shoes because they're running shoes and they're going to keep me supported. Um, but I also, you know, would prefer to spend like $20 or $30 on shoes from Shein or something like that. You know, um, it's just a lot of my tastes, I've had to, you know, scale them back. And even, you know, things that I have, you know, um, I had a weekend car, I had a convertible. I love that car. I love that car so, so much. I had it for almost 10 years. It was a luxury convertible. It was fully paid off. I worked my butt off to buy that car. It was my dream car. And um, I had another car, a little car that I would use to go back and forth to work in because I had like a 20, 25 minute commute. And I didn't want to bust up my, you know, beautiful convertible going back and forth on the expressway and stuff. So I, I bought myself a little economical car, basic car. I mean, you know, no frills, just something safe to get me from point A to point B. And what I realized in those, what, six years, seven years, um, eight years even, is that we're all going to get to the same place. And it doesn't matter what type of vehicle it is. It doesn't matter if it's a luxury car or if it's a economical car. I mean, we're, if we're at the beach, we're all at the beach and some vehicle brought us there. So um, again, this goes back to what I was saying about how we do things to impress people that we don't even know. Sometimes I feel like even from the car we buy to the house we buy, like we feel like we have to keep up with a certain status quo. Get, get that mindset out. Like, you know, you, you don't, you don't need to do that. Save your money. And so I made the decision to sell my weekend car because I wasn't having weekends to go cruising around in it and I wouldn't take it to work. So it spent, it lived the majority of its life in my garage. I loved it to pieces. Do I regret it? Absolutely not. Do I still want it back? Absolutely. But it doesn't fit in with my life it just didn't i didn't have time to use it i had two full-time jobs and by me keeping it there thinking i was protecting it it was actually doing more harm to it than good because cars are meant to be used they're meant to be run and so um that is when i started you know this whole aspect of downsizing and more recently uh, my living room. I completely downsized. I kept the same furniture, but I got rid of my dining room table. I didn't get rid of it. It's just hidden. It's hidden in this house so well. It's completely taken apart. Uh, I'm going to save it for maybe one day if I move into a bigger house, which here I'm talking about downsizing and then I'm thinking about, you know, moving somewhere else. But I live in a very small house. I live in about a 12, 1300 square foot home. Um, there's one bathroom downstairs. There's one bathroom upstairs, but upstairs is like a, an, a, 
attached garage apartment. So it's not like I can just go and use the upstairs bathroom. I physically have to go outside and go out there and use it. And then I do have, since I have a jacuzzi, I had a little, I converted my storage to a bathroom. And so there's a bathroom for when I have like get togethers and stuff and everybody's outside, they can just use that. But, um, you know, I, I live in a small house. This is a house that I inherited. This is the house that I grew up in. And I've completely, you know, renovated it from top to bottom, like several times over the course that I've lived here. And, um, you know, it's just my dining room table now is a four seater and it's so small it's cute but it's so tiny like i wasn't expecting it to be that tiny but i realized that's all i need because how often was i sitting at the dining room table you know like i just now i have more time to sit and eat my lunch but sometimes my lunch is a working lunch or sometimes my lunch is only 30 minutes and then i gotta get back to filming or i gotta get back to doing chores here or doing whatnot um downsizing is important and it's an important aspect of getting you ready for that mindset of retirement because you know, you want your retirement to come sooner than later. You want to be young enough, healthy enough to enjoy the things that you worked so hard for. You want to be able to enjoy it. And it's so sad, but I've seen so many people um, when I was teaching, so many people that they, they waited too long and either they didn't get to retire, meaning they passed away while they were still employed, or they passed away a year, two years after they retired. And I always told myself, I never want to be one of those. Like, I, I want to be able to retire young and enjoy my life, enjoy it now while I'm healthy and I'm strong and I'm able to because I've just seen it happen. And I know you guys can probably attest to this. You see everybody, they, and I know every situation's different. You know, I know some people have no choice. They have to keep working until that point. But if you have a choice and you're able to, you take your retirement as soon as you can, you know? And that all goes back down to just downsizing and realizing that we don't need all these material things to be happy at the end of the day. What would really put a smile on our face is just to have all this weight lifted and to feel relief. I don't have to wake up early to be somewhere. I don't have to fight that rush hour traffic. I have my own business. I can be my own boss. You can start a new life. You can take a vacation, go down to the beach, whatever you want to. Nobody is telling you when you can go to the bathroom or we can, when you can eat lunch. There's a lot to say, Has, there's a lot to say for, for downsizing and the benefits that it can bring towards your later years. Now from downsizing, we're going to talk about going back to skincare. So this might be a little controversial, it might not be, but Botox, Dysport. I am an advocate for that. I totally recommend doing it. I think for me, it was something I started doing when I turned 30 years old. And I just started treating like this area right here, like the forehead area, because that 111 ran in my family. And so um, I would go like maybe at that time I could go like every five months, six months and just get it done. I mean, I was 30 years old. I didn't really have any lines, but it's something that I've kept up. It's something that I've kept up. I do my forehead have my little crow's feet done. Sometimes I'll do the bunny lines. This time that I went, which was last month, I didn't treat the bunny lines, but for the first time ever, I did right under here. That one hurt. The rest doesn't hurt, but I did right under here. So I don't know, as she told me, I can just alternate, either do under here one time, and then the next time do the bunnies, so on and so forth. But that makes me feel good. And I feel like it helps my skin. And I feel like it's something that I, I've, enjoyed the benefits of it. Like I like the way my skin looks. I think it's helped to reduce the fine lines because you know, you're basically kind of paralyzing the muscle there. 
when you stop doing Botox, what's going to happen? Well, your natural skin, the way it would look if you never did those treatments, that's how it's going to look. But maybe just a little bit better because it's used to looking a certain way. Is Botox for everybody? No. But should you be ashamed or embarrassed that you do it? Absolutely not. If that's something that's going to help you feel more confident, if it's going to help your makeup application, do it. If you can afford to do it, do it because I am here to tell you, you only get one face in life. This is it. What you do with it is your business, but we always want to put our best face forward, right? We always want to, you know, look our best, feel our best with, without makeup. And if that means that a little Botox, a little dice sport here and there is going to help make you feel good, then do it. Now, as far as like other injectables, uh, like Juvederm and all of that stuff. You know, I tried it for the first time last year. So mine has pretty much worn off already because it's been a year. Um, it's not something for me right now in my 40s or I'm 41. It's just not something that I feel I need. It's not something that I want to do. It's also more expensive. Um, I'm perfectly happy with the results that I've gotten from my own skincare and from Dysport. I think for me, like I have found what has worked for me um, and just getting a facial whenever I can. Usually it's only twice a year that I'm able to get a facial. Maybe that can change now. We'll see. But do what makes you happy. If a little poke here and there makes you happy, then so be it no judgment. So I have two things left on my list. Next, I want to talk about foundation, lighter coverage foundation. I know you're saying, Steph, you love medium and full coverage. Sure, sure I do. I absolutely do. That's not going to change. But as I've gotten older, I've developed more of an appreciation for lighter weight foundations for skin tint. And here is one of my favorite highly recommended holy grail skin tints this is the wet n wild tinted hydrator i have the shade fair that's pretty much the best shade for me this one is oil free it has squalene and it has hyaluronic acid in it i am a normal to oily skin type by the way um this is like five or six dollars it's fantastic it's worth every penny so many of you have said that this has worked wonders for you. It stands up to the heat and humidity and it just, I mean, this would get me a good 10 hour work day. Like, and that's how I do my foundation reviews. You guys know that been on my channel for a while. You guys know that all my foundation reviews usually span two days and 10 hours of wear. This one is so good. And since it's such a lightweight formula, it doesn't really settle, but this one still provides nice coverage. And what I've come to learn when it comes to skin tints, here's another favorite, the one from Tula, the Radiant Skin Tint. This one has SPF 30 in it. Um, yes, they're lighter coverage, but that's okay because they do help to even out the skin tone. And then I can just spot conceal. I spot conceal anyway, whether it's full coverage or not, with uh, my concealer right here on the sides of my cheeks where I have old acne scars and minor discoloration. But I can just utilize my concealer to cover up those extra areas that need that extra coverage. I've also been enjoying, this is the newest one in my stash, the one from Bobbi Brown, the Vitamin Enrich uh, Skin Tint with SPF 15. These are three lightweight you know, light, medium coverage foundations or skin tints that have worked wonders. Fenty Ease Drop as well. I love that one. Uh, L'Oreal Maybelline. They have two amazing skin tints over there. Um, try them. Try lightening up your coverage from your foundation and just using your concealer that's your skin tone okay you don't want to use a brightening concealer concealer that's a lighter you need to use a concealer that is your skin tone like the same shade as the foundation almost maybe a shade deeper even because you're going to cover it with the um with the foundation but if you use a concealer that is the same color of your skin to cover your blemishes, okay? And you kind of just pat it on there, be gentle with it, let it dry down a bit, then you put the foundation over and then you powder it, seal it with some powder. It's gonna take years off your face because you're not gonna have this thick, heavy foundation. You're gonna have something lightweight that's more breathable, that looks more youthful. And then you're only gonna have the, the stronger coverage or the more heavier coverage 
just in those small areas where you need that added bit of attention. But that is something that I have come to embrace in my 40s is just embracing skin tint and just realizing that a full coverage look doesn't need to be all foundation based. You can get there with a light to medium foundation and by using a good concealer. And last, but definitely not least, drink your water. I tell you this at the end of every single one of my videos. I have my water jug right here. If it makes you feel good to get one with these little reminders and do it, I could care less if my water bottle has this or not. This is what I would take to work and I would usually need to fill it up before I came home or when I was done with my last class of the day. But um, I'd start drinking water the moment I wake up and I keep drinking it till about maybe an hour, 30 minutes before I go to bed. I start tapering off, you know, in the evening because I don't want to be getting up in the middle of the night. Sometimes I do wake up at least once during the night to go to the bathroom, but um, for the most part, I'm always in the bathroom during the day because that's when my water cons consumption is at its highest. Um, when I was working out more regularly, it was so easy for me to drink a gallon of water. I probably drank more than that um, just because there was a time where I was doing my cardio it was like during my lunch break, this is when I was coaching. So I would use my lunch break to go run. And so sometimes it was like 95 degrees outside and I was there doing two miles. And so the next class I had was my athletic period. So it didn't matter if I was hot and sweaty for that because I was going to the weight room and everybody's hot and sweaty over there. So um, I would use utilize my time at work wisely um, when it came to that. But, um, yeah, I would have to consume a lot of water during those days. But even now that I'm slowly getting back into, you know, a good workout regimen, uh, I am still drinking close to a gallon of water a day. And it's not all at, at one time. I drink as I feel thirsty. I don't force myself to drink if I don't want to. Um, you know, you don't need to drink all this water at once. It actually could be dangerous for you. You just drink little sips little sips every few minutes just take a little sip take a little sip um, I'm not a coffee drinker sometimes I'll have an iced coffee but it's you know mainly because I want something sweet you know um, but I have an iced tea an unsweetened iced tea right here I usually have one during lunchtime and I'll sip on it a little bit mm. through the afternoon it is at right after lunch that I'm filming this video so you know I, I sip on a combination of both of those things uh, from like let's say mid morning to mid afternoon and that's about it you know i've just come to be a water drinker and i started that when i was 28 years old i've carried it into my 40s maybe that has also helped you know improve my skin's clarity uh but i mean the benefits that water can give you are you know limitless but just you know ask your doctor maybe you haven't been drinking water uh, maybe you just drink a lot of soda or energy drinks. Please try to get away from that. Try not to do those at all. Soda, try to taper off to just maybe one a week. Um, I've cut out sodas. Now the only time I drink a soda is if I have an upset stomach. And then sometimes I'll just reach for like a Perrier, a sparkling water, and that'll help calm my stomach down. But definitely regular water. You know, my jug goes with me if I'm going to the store, um, if I'm going to work, when I was going to work, like I always took my jug with me. It, it had to be there. So if you get in that mindset and you start carrying your jug with you, it's just going to be a natural habit and you'll eventually just see that you're so, that you're going to be drinking water on your own like it's not going to be forced your body is just going to be craving it you're going to be wanting to drink the water and um yeah, I think it's helped. I think it's helped my health a lot and I think it's helped my complexion quite a bit. Okay guys, so those were my 10 realizations, my 10 recommendations for all of you maybe who turned 40 this year or you are going to turn 40 this year or maybe you're on your way out and heading into 50 because all of these definitely apply to not just 40s but 30s, 30s even. Just Everybody, like I think that all of you watching, and I have a wide r a range or age range when it comes to my audience, um, 
but I know a lot of you can take bits and pieces of what I said and work them into your current, you know, situation, your daily routines and whatnot. And I hope I was able to provide you guys with some guidance, some inspiration, just some motivation, right? We all need to be motivated, um, especially as we get older. Sometimes I feel like, you know, maybe we get a little down. We start thinking about the past. We think about regrets. There's nothing to regret. There's nothing to regret. Everything that you've done has gotten you to where you are at today and will help you get to where you're going in the future. Please don't dwell on the past. It's back there for a reason. We need to keep looking forward. We need to keep ourselves inspired and motivated. And that's what I'm going to be here for. If you guys need motivation, inspiration, you come ask me. I'll give it to you as best as I can. But um, you just need to get into that positive mindset and surround yourself with positivity. And if that means doing away with social media, if that means cutting ties with a certain group of friends, maybe certain family members even, then so be it. But if you keep living down, if you keep thinking, oh, I'm 40, I still haven't done this, or I still need to do that. No, just keep your eyes forward, stay positive, and remember, you've got this, I'm here for you, and I hope this video is going to help a lot of you. Thank you so much, Alicia and Heather, for inspiring this video, for asking me to collab with you guys. I had a fantastic time. I love doing this. I love doing this video. Um, I will have both of their channels linked in the description box. That way you guys can head on over there and give them some love. Tell them Steph sent you. I want to thank you all so much for watching another one of my videos. You all have a great day or night, wherever it is you all are at. Stay hydrated, guys, and drink your water. Cheers. And I'm going to see you all very soon. Bye.